Hi, my name is Tiffany and I'm a teen librarian for Fresno County Public Library. I'd like to welcome you to our brand new Digital Summer at Your Library program. We may look a little different, but we still have the same amount of fun offered for June and July. I'd like to take this time to remind everyone to visit our website at fresnolibrary.org backslash summer. There you can find a lot more information on all the fun stuff we have offered for Fresno County, such as grab and go lunches for kids and teens, take and make crafts for teens, and a reading program for all ages. Again, go ahead and stop by fresnolibrary.org backslash summer for more information. Enjoy the show. Thank you. Hi, my name is Michelle and I'm here from Half Fork World Travel for the Fresno County Library Summer Session. Today I'm going to cover three different recipes that you can use vegetables in an interesting way and it'll be a good way to beat the summer heat. When it's 105 out, nobody wants to do a lot of cooking, let alone have to do more dishes than they need to. So today we're gonna cover just three simple ones. We're going to have roasted beets with pesto, a shaved fennel and apple salad, and then a, a roasted carrot hummus. So we're gonna start with the carrot hummus. You're going to take eight ounces or one cup of carrots sliced into one inch. I use the baby carrots that you can find at the grocery store. It's a lot easier that way. And if you have small children around, it's a good way to get them to eat extra vegetables. So you're gonna put those on the tray. You take three cloves of garlic that you've peeled. You're going to leave them whole. So you're going to take a little bit of olive oil and you're gonna drizzle it over. Not a lot, just enough so that they have a little bit of a coating. And about a pinch or two of salt. I'm using pink Himalayan salt, but you can add kosher salt or whatever you have handy. And stir those around to make sure that all the carrots are covered. Once everything is covered, you're going to want to put it in the oven at 425 for about 25 minutes or until the carrots are soft. Okay. Those are nicely covered. So let me cover that up with foil and put it in the oven. All right, so I have some that I did earlier. Once they are tender to the sport touch, you're going to want to let them cool because you're gonna put them in a food processor. So the other ingredients you're going to need are a half a cup of olive oil, an eighth teaspoon of cayenne pepper. You can also use cumin, or if you don't want it as spicy, you can use a different flavoring. Um, you can use herbs, choice is up to you. I like it spicy, so cayenne pepper it is one can of chickpeas that has been drained and rinsed and two tablespoons of lemon juice all right so let's get the food processor set up here all right so we're going to combine everything in the food processor let's start with the can of chickpeas the lemon juice We'll put the cayenne pepper in there, and now we'll add the carrots. All right, everything's in there. I would say put in about half of the olive oil, not all of it. You're going to want to pulse it a little bit just to get everything broken up. everything looks like it's breaking down pretty well you can add the rest of the olive oil in and you're going to puree it until it's smooth that should just take a couple minutes one thing you might want to do is make sure that you take the top off and use a spatula to push the carrots on top towards the bottom otherwise you're going to have a lot of carrot chunks on top and not mixed in with everything else. It 
Smells really good with the olive oil and the roasted garlic. You're going to want to give it a little bit of a taste. It's nice and sweet, but I would add a little bit more salt just to bring up the sweetness. Salt is a good balance for that. It may not seem like it, but salt brings out flavors a little bit more easily. We have one little piece that didn't get broken up, but that's okay. All right, so once you have it all mixed up and pulsed, it should be about consistency of what you would expect hummus to be, a little bit thick. If you want it a little bit thinner, you can add a little bit more liquid. Um, I would re recommend probably like a little bit of chicken stock. I wouldn't say any more olive oil because it's already um, has enough of that in there. You could also add a little bit more pepper or red pepper flakes if you like it even spicier or, or a little bit of salsa or a hot sauce. So once it's ready, you can put it into a dish. And again, if you have small children, this is a great way to get them to eat extra vegetables and make it fun so they don't know that they're eating something that's healthy for them. And I have a little bit of shredded cilantro to put on top, make it a little bit more festive, and you can serve it with celery sticks and bread or even chopped up tortillas. It's a great little snack. The kids are going to enjoy it and so will you. All right, now we're going to go on to the next recipe. We're going to make a roasted beet and pepita pesto. You're going to want to take two or three beets about this size, scrub them up, cut the tops off, leave the root on or you can trim it. Just keep in mind that if you trim beets before you cook them, the water is going to become whatever color the beet is. In this case, these are kind of a pink and white beet, so when I cook them, the water got a pink tinge. So you can either roast them for 25 to 45 minutes, depending if you leave them whole or cut them in half. Drizzle them with just a little bit of olive oil and a sprinkling of salt. Put them in the oven uncovered at about 350. Check on them periodically until they're tender. You can also boil them for about 15 to 20 minutes. Again, if you cut them in half, they're going to cook a little bit faster. Or in this case, I put mine in the Instant Pot. Cook them on high with pressure for about 20 minutes. Let the steam go both the pressure evaporated a little bit by itself, did a quick release, let them cool down. Once they're cool, they're very easy to peel. You just put them in a plastic bag, put them in the fridge, that way they cool down completely and the outer skin just peels right off. It's really simple. So we have the beads now, and as you can see, they're very pretty. You're just gonna take them and cut them into slices. If you want, you can cut them into sticks or cubes. It's all up to you. I prefer these sliced like this. Okay, so when those are done, you're going to set them off to the side. I'm just going to do one for now. And then we have to make the pesto. So we're going to put into the food processor. We have one eighth cup of toasted pepitas or pumpkin seeds. We have one cup of coarsely chopped parsley. In this case, there are three types, uh, Italian, curly, and flat. This is one of those recipes that you can use whatever's available. It's not every time you can find flat parsley, but again, it's, it's up to preference. And I'm going to add just a couple pieces of mint, just to spice it up just a smidge. That's uh, an ingredient you can add or not, depending if you like mint or not. We have one clove of garlic minced. 
and about an eighth cup of olive oil. Now we're just going to take about a good two finger pinch of salt and put it in. We're going to taste it part way through to see if that is enough. That. Pulse it on low until everything is combined. Okay, remember to scrape the sides down periodically to make sure everything is incorporated. Oh, it smells amazing with the garlic. If it seems it's a little too dry, you can always add just a little bit more of olive oil. All right, I think we're about ready to give it a taste. Oh yeah, it's a lot better. It's really good. I think I'm gonna pulse it for a minute more. Just make sure everything is chopped up inside. It's nice and bright green, and it's real simple to plate. Move this out of the way. So you're going to want to take your beets and fan them out. Look how pretty those are. For those of you that don't say that you don't like beets, you're probably remembering the canned ones that your grandmother served at Thanksgiving or other holidays. These are a little bit different. When you roast beets, they get very sweet and actually taste almost like candy. Roasting is about the best way to do beets. You get a nice soft texture. The crunchy pesto will go with that really well. And you just wanna work that in there. Now, if you want, you can leave it as is, or you can liven it up a little bit with a little bit of feta cheese. I think I'm going to do that. Again, when you're in the kitchen, it's all up to you. You can change it however you want and go from there. All right, look at this lovely dish. Now, in case of hot weather, a nice cool salad is the best way to go. It's a good way to introduce beets to your children. They're very sweet, the pesto is nice and crunchy, and the feta cheese on top is a nice salt complement to it. When you're roasting the beets, you can put it in the oven with another vegetable, say if you're doing the roasted carrot hummus from earlier or other dinner. You can prep ahead of time so that way the next day, the beets already cooled down. You just have to peel them, make the pesto and go. All right, we're on the last recipe of the day. We're going to make a shaved fennel with apple and feta cheese. So if you watched the herb episode, I had fennel. It's a bulb type vegetable, but the herb part are the fronds. You can also roast fennel, steam it, boil it, all kinds of different things. So I'll put these here for later. We're going to cut the end of the fennel bulb off and peel away the outer layer. It's a little tough at times, but it's worth it. All right, so fennel, it's kind of an interesting vegetable in that it smells like licorice, but when you roast it, the licorice flavor goes away. So we're just going to do half of the, the half of the bowl today, make a small salad because we have plenty of apples to offset and add to it. So from here, you're going to just make sure that you chop it so that way the fronds come apart. Or 
or you can stack several up. The main thing is to be careful with your knife so that you don't hurt yourself. And in case you weren't aware, a sharp knife is less likely to hurt you than a dull knife because you're less likely to fight cutting the food. If you have a dull knife, you're going to be fighting the food to cut it smaller, and that's when you're like you're more likely to slip and hurt yourself. Cut this one. All right, so these are all bite sized. I'm gonna put these in the bowl. And again, this is a fresh salad made with raw ingredients. It's really good when it's 105 outside. This is a half of a diced gala apple. You can use any apple that you choose. This is one of those dishes that you can use whatever's in the refrigerator. If you have a Granny Smith or Red Delicious, that will work just as well. You can also add mandarin slices or any other fruit, diced fruit. It's again, it's a nice light salad and won't fill you up. And it's a good way again to get your children to eat vegetables if you're not sure. If you can get them involved in putting the salad together after you do the cutting, then they're going to be more willing to try it. So from there, we're going to add just about six inches of peeled and shaved daikon. If, all, if you have regular radishes, you can throw those in as, instead of that. And then we're going to cut down a little bit of mint. I'm not going to add too much just because some people in this house and the that live in this house are not real mint fans, but a little bit is good for everybody. So we're going to slice it very thin, make little ribbons. You stack the leaves up on top of each other and roll it up. So that way you have a nice little garnish like that. We're going to also add a little bit of diced parsley and cilantro. If you're one of those people that cilantro tastes like soap, you don't have to use it. You can just add a little bit extra parsley. And I personally don't care for the stems in my salad. But if you're going to make a pesto like we did a few minutes ago, you can also use the stems in that. They'll be chopped up and work quite well in that. So for the dressing of the salad, we're going to use about an eighth of a cup of olive oil and just a couple teaspoons of lemon juice. And I'm going to add just a little bit of salt and pepper, a couple of grinds. And this is Himalayan sea salt, but you can use kosher salt or whatever you have available. All right, so we're going to toss that real quick. The idea of dressing a salad is to coat the vegetables, but not so much that it drowns them. And that's one of the larger mistakes that happen when somebody is making a salad is they add so much dressing that they are not able to taste the salad itself. All right, so now we're ready to plate. You could also add cherry tomatoes to this if you wanted. Um, shaved carrots would work very well. The choice is up to you, but it's nice and light in the valley heat. And since we live in the valley, everything is local and easy to find. And then at the very end, you can garnish it with Another mint leaf or two. And take a little bit of crumbled feta cheese and put it over the top. I think another grind of pepper would be in order. And there you have it. You have a nice light fennel salad that's perfect for a summer day. I hope everybody enjoyed the recipes today. If you have any questions, thoughts, any other recipes you want to see, you can go to www.forktravel.com. Drop me a line and I'll get back to you. 
And remember, life is too short for bad food.